For our project, we decided to create a presentation based off the communication skills we have learned in this class. We put together a workshop that helped younger students understand the importance of small groups and the way that they interact with one another. Our journey throughout this project allowed us to grow as individuals and learn how to band together better. As a group, we went through the phases of development that are described in our textbook. The phases included our forming, storming, norming, performing, and adjourning. Forming is when group members get to know each other and try to reach common goals. Amy started our group forming by literally forming our group. She chose the members of our group based on our strengths and weaknesses. All group members have worked with almost everyone in the group on previous projects for this course, so our forming stage was quite short. Diversity is what makes up our group. We're an extremely diverse group of individuals that came together and embraced our differences because it helped us succeed as a team. During our first meeting, we went around and discussed our passions and talents. And although we discovered a common passion and ran with it, we were surrounded with so much diversity in that meeting because we recognized each other as talented individuals with so much to offer. From Hannibal the bodybuilder to Jen who plays the ukulele, we acknowledged what makes each other tick and formed cohesion from that. During our first group meeting, we tried to narrow down ideas for our group project. During this time, we played games to get our creative juices flowing. To get ideas from each of us, we decided to play our own version of Spin the Bottle. Whoever the bottle pointed towards would have to tell the rest of the group an idea that they had for our project. After the bottle landed on everyone, we had multiple ideas written on the whiteboard. The next creative strategy we used in order to narrow down our ideas was voting. Since Melissa told us that we should have a plan A, B, and C, we decided that each of us should have two votes and we should narrow down all of our ideas until we had our top three remaining. This proved to be effective as well because our group could then start to get a sense of what we might be doing before our executive meeting. For plan A, we decided on Steve's idea of presenting what we've learned in small group communication to younger kids because we thought it was important content to teach to a younger age group. We then did idea writing to find out more about our individual traits and what we were passionate about in order to make the project more successful. One way that our group utilized our strengths was by writing all of our strengths on our board. We all sat down as a group and wrote together things that we were either interested in, have hobbies in, or are just good at. With this, we found one common thing is music. We then went off that to build our project. We took advantage of our resources combined as a group. We utilized Angel's job at Boise Rock School to incorporate our passion for music. We also utilized Alex and Janie's connections with schools in the area and Evan's connection with the Boys and Girls Club. Knowing we had these resources provided us with backup plans and different options in case something fell through. With some of us being involved in Greek life and other clubs on campus, we knew we had a plethora of options given to us with a wide array of diversity our group members have. We made our decisions with open discussions and creativity, ending in ways that made everyone feel vital to the process. Storming is the phase of team development marked by conflict. Though our group process remained relatively free of conflict, there were some aspects of our communication that made things difficult at times. One area of conflict that arose in our group was texting and doing personal work while in our meetings. For this conflict, we decided to put into our code of conduct that there will be no texting or working on individual projects while during our meeting time. Another conflict within our group was group meeting times, especially the official meeting time for our presentation in the community. There were many of us that could only make it work during the class hour, Others were able to meet during other days, but only during school hours, and others were open to meeting throughout the week. This caused our group to fall into entropy, where we experienced slight frustration and stagnation. We finally organized our schedules in a way that worked for all eight of us and the school we were to present our project at. The lead tended to shift from person to person, which made it more comfortable for each member to speak up or take the lead in areas that they felt stronger in. At times, it may have caused a bit of chaos and conflict because of the variety of leading voices, but each group member felt heard and important, so when it came time to get down to the work, we could do it. Conflict was managed constructively because when one of us would notice it, we weren't hesitant to let the group know. We felt comfortable enough with each other that when something went wrong, we could easily let the other group members know how we were feeling. There wasn't negative tension because we wanted to see each other and ourselves succeed together so we always welcome conflict knowing it would help us reach our goals. Norming is when conflicts are resolved, close relationships develop, and unity and harmony emerge. The focus of each person in our group is to truly help the group. 
For our project, we made a video about small group communication and used the analogy of a band to get the point across about why small group communication is important. Bands communicate all the time with each other, whether it is listening to each other while they are playing or collaborating on songwriting ideas. In order to teach individual concepts such as avoiding and competitive conflict styles, we use the example of us being in a band. For example, for avoiding conflict style, we staged a fight between Alex and Hannibal while we were playing in the band. Alex was not playing enough cowbell, and Hannibal decided to tell him about it, and instead of us working something out, Alex decided to walk off and avoid talking to Hannibal, thus further adding to the conflict. Here is the scene as we presented it to the students. Alex, real quick, man. I know you're doing, you're doing a great job, but you know, could have used a little more cowbell on that one. You know, I, you, you give it all, but you use a little more cowbell. No, wait. No, don't, hey, don't avoid it. Here is a scene that we presented to the students on competition. <laughs> the scene we presented to the students on social loafing. Okay guys, we got a big tomorrow. Yeah. It's a big, an actual paying gig. Okay. We're gonna do this, we're gonna do it the right way. Last time, ready? Count it off. Good, good, good. What? What's going on? Please, get off the phone. Do not be a social loafer. Give me your phone. You're done. Do you want to be in this band or not? Yes. Again. In your hand. Let's go. Now. We also gave the students an example of a good band or small group with a band of kids angel teaches at the Boise Rock School. Angel filmed them playing together and working well together. We use this band as an example of synchrony, collaboration, and being creative. They wrote their song ideas on the board and tossed around a marker to think of more song ideas. During the norming phase, we experienced collaboration and synchrony because of the chemistry we shared. We got work done efficiently and actually went out to lunch together after we filmed the video. This helped our collaborations because of the walls we let down and the chemistry we shared as a group during that lunch. With more trust and stronger relationships, we were able to move from norming to performing. Performing is the real work phase with increased task orientation, open exchange, and feedback. Our group started experiencing performing when we finally made a specific date and time for our presentation at Compass Public Charter School. It was brought to our attention that we should try to get as much of the portfolio done before the presentation date so that we didn't feel overwhelmed after the event to complete the portfolio. Everyone was assigned a portion of the portfolio aside from Angel as she volunteered to edit the entire video presentation. Everyone worked on their section within our Google Drive folder so each could contribute in editing, proofreading, and collaborating as necessary. We planned our agenda of the lesson beforehand so that when we arrived there we would know what we were going to present and how we would present it. Jen provided cookies for the students as an icebreaker so it didn't seem as threatening as well as treats for the students who were paying attention. Hannibal then started off the lesson by showing the students what idea writing was and how students can use that as an effective strategy in small groups. In order to encourage students to share their ideas, our group had them toss a ball around to each other and every time the ball got to a different person, each student would share what they knew about small group communication. Before we started our lesson, we initially asked the students what came to mind when they thought of small group communication, and this is what they said. Common interests, teamwork, anger management, practice, communication, verbalization, understanding, empathy, brainstorming, tolerance, leadership, listening,
conflict resolution, and openness. Our presentation was thought out and organized. We brought worksheets that highlighted important concepts of small group communication to our students and showed a video as well. Although the presentation didn't go as originally planned, it ended up highlighting exactly what we were teaching. We split the students into two smaller groups and had them collaborate in these smaller groups about what makes up small group communication and when they would use it in real life. Initially we were going to teach them as one larger group, but the video didn't upload correctly, so we had to split up into these smaller groups in order to show them the video on a laptop instead of in front of the whole class. Although this initially threw a wrench in our plans, it ended up working out for us because it gave an example of small group communication and conflicts to the students that we were teaching. After the presentation was finished and both groups were collected, Amy grabbed the attention of the group to wrap up the meeting. Additional words were added to the aforementioned list by the students after seeing and hearing a little more about the concept of small group communication, synchrony, conflict, social loafing, and creativity. The students were asked to identify situations or places in everyday life where small group communication could come in handy. One student said, the presidential debates. Judging from the questions and reactions from the students, our presentation was received very well, which proved that the creative strategies we used throughout our time as a group proved to be effective. We thank the students and the teacher for their time. The students were excited about taking a picture with our group before leaving and enjoyed chatting with us afterwards while Angel filmed a few students talking about what they learned from our presentation. Small groups are important because it's, you use it every day in your life. Small group communication is really important so that you can work with the people who you have to work with and not get into a lot of conflicts that might hinder your ability to produce a good product. So we're obviously going to be faced with dealing with small groups, whether it be in work, in our families, in school. we got to know how to communicate respectfully and be able to facilitate an environment that is safe and feels like everybody can contribute in order to get the best uh, outcome as possible. As our project came to a close, we entered into the adjourning phase of development. This is a distinct ending point to a group. Our group is very happy with the progress made these last few weeks, the success of our presentations at Compass Public Charter School, and feels that we made a positive impact on the education and importance of small group communication to the students that attended our presentation. Team Fire out.